Oh, that was just running error. That, however, is a village. It's a good boat parking spot. Yeah. Red clay, red sand. That's always useful. I don't really have any of this. Got pigs, I got a bunny. And we got a village. Huh. Hey dudes. How's it going? Oh, there's a blacksmith here. Huh. Yeah. Uh, some iron apples. Okay. Huh, oh, hello. Huh, oh, how are you? Huh? Huh? Oh, you're a butcher? Oh. Hello, Mr. Librarian. What? Luck of the sea. Hi, nice to meet you. Very good. Huh. Oh. Okay. So, so yeah, I have some, I have some time. Oh, look at this, more farmland out over the water, just like that one village near the ice farm. That's weird. I wonder if that's like a 1.10 or 1.10 or 1.9 uh, sort of quirk. I don't know. It's kind of weird. You're nice and dark. Yeah. Right near a desert. I hear a zombie. Where's the zombie? Huh. Huh. So, um, yeah, so anyway, that's where G is. I need to get uh, back to playing Chihuahua Land. I want to get in and, and develop a little bit some uh, farms and whatnot in uh, in that world and sort of get uh, Chihuahua Power G back into playing the game. Um, maybe before Minecon? Mine Who knows? Uh, she is going. Which is exciting. Oh, there's, there's experience balls here because I killed the zombie. Alright. I should have brought a map. I always forget to bring maps. That would have been useful. So... Let's see, what else is going on? Last night, we uh, made, or sorry, Chihuahua Power G made uh, paella, or kind of a paella. It didn't use any saffron. Um, it used, and we used brown rice instead of, I think white rice is fairly traditional. Um, but it was yummy. It used a couple different types of sausage and um, chicken. It was it was very good, and so I think that's that'll become kind of a staple. We hadn't really tried that recipe before, so I think that'll be a bit of a, a staple for us to be able to make and uh, have during the week. I mean, it would make a good lunch. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, and and then. Another goal of the weekend was to was to make some ribs. Um, uh, my ribs process is a little involved. It re involves uh, sous vide cooking, which is uh, I don't know if I've talked about sous vide or not before, but it's a uh, it basically uses a immersed heater that goes into the into a water bath and very precisely heats the water to that temperature by circulating the water past the heater. And in that way you can cook stuff, you can cook stuff at very precise temperatures. And so say if you're making, uh, making a steak and you want the steak to be medium and normally you go out on the grill and sort of cook it until it feels about the right sort of touch uh, to be the temperature that you want if you want a medium redundant, that's uh and that's fine it's hard to do well 
um, it's easier to do if you have a thermometer stick it in the middle but and then if you do that on a very hot grill then the there's always a, a zone around the edge that's uh, overdone and then the center is done to the doneness that you like which is all you know which is fine it's sort of normal but the nice thing with sous vide is you can cook it and if you set the temperature of the the water to the temperature that you actually want, um, you can then... Uh, wait, is this one of the ones I already sailed past? It might be. Or do I have a fourth here? This might be a fourth. Oh, goodness, actually, I think it is. So I think I'm generating train around it. Goodness gracious. Okay, get away. Well, this little island might be a useful place for uh, staging an assault on the ocean monuments here. Let's get out and light it up. So normally, if you look in a cookbook... Actually, this, this would be about perfect for that guy. Oh, look at that. Is that a roofed force or is that a mushroom, mushroom island? It might be a mushroom island. Let's go see. That would be a, that would be a fine discovery. That would make this whole expedition worth it if that's what that is. Let's light this up here so we don't get mobs spawning here. And then I can look at laying in a portal here so that we can get out this way a little bit quicker through the nether. And and uh, we can get out here safely. And then I can build a little base. And if we light this up, this is small enough that nothing's going to spawn around here. This is very good. Okay, let's... Uh, Let's do this, because it would be primarily for getting that guy. Let's grab these coordinates, and then let's hop back in the boat. Boop, 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 beep, 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 beep. Okay, let's go. Let's see what this is. If this is a mushroom island, I'm going to be so happy. It is! Look at the mushrooms! Oh my gosh, I'm so thrilled. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, and I don't have any mycelium yet. I will in a moment. Oh, this is so awesome. Okay. Oh, I, it's a pretty good size one. Oh, the, the lava is exciting too. Okay, this is great. Boop! Ha ha! Look at this. Oh, oh there's mushrooms up on top of the mushroom let's grab the coordinates of this as well oh this is great and the nice thing about mushroom island let's just confirm look at that mushroom island biome very good hi guys how are you oh and of course if you have wood and you make bowls you can milk these guys for mushroom soup is this entire is this the whole island the mushroom island because that would be wow that's dangerous looking the cool thing about mushroom islands is that mobs hostile mobs do not spawn here okay oh this is great this is so cool um let me finish up what I was talking about. Let me get my Silk Touch shovel. Relatively new invention. Instrument for me. Let me pick up some of this. Uh, and it will spread back over to the dirt. And I can farm this stuff at home. So I don't even need that much of it. Hey guys, how are you? Oh, this is so cool. So cool. Uh-oh. Wow. This isn't the worst thing in the world, but it looks like this bit of land, this Mushroom Island, connects to a, it looks like a plains biome. 
The only downside to that is that stuff can spawn in the plains biome and travel into the mushroom biome at night, making this less safe. But like this cave, oh. okay. Yeah, see we have regular cows over here. Okay, not the worst thing in the world. We could build a wall here. <laughs> we can make it defensible. Or if I light up enough of this area where nothing can spawn here. Oh my gosh, the cows on top of the mushrooms are so funny. They must have generated up there because obviously they can't fly. Oh, this is great. Okay, so let me quickly finish up my sous vide little topic. As I have a tendency to start talking about things, get distracted by stuff like, oh, mushroom islands, and then uh, not finish up. Which is frustrating when I'm editing and must be frustrating to listen to. So I, um, if you want to cook steak at medium, that island is completely isolated. Uh, if you want to cook a steak at medium, you can cook it to the temperature that you want and it can be cooked medium all the way through. And if you look in cookbooks and whatnot, they will recommend, oh no, you have to cook, you know, you have to cook it to 165 degrees. That's weird. That's just a lighting glitch on the mycelium, I, I assume. Uh, you can cook, you have to cook to 165 degrees exactly. Here's where I landed. Nice. So that means the, uh, the ocean monument's out that way somewhere. Cool. Um, and, but they, they say that for legal reasons. Because if you cook something to 165 degrees, especially something like uh, animal proteins, which can be, oh, how do I get up? Um, which can be a carrier of foodborne uh, beasties such as uh, ow, um, salmonella then uh, cooking it to 165 and holding it there for about five minutes is enough to assure that it will all be killed and the food will then be safe to eat which is cool uh, but 165 is a bit too much if you want your food to be cooked to like medium doneness it's just it's too much uh so no. oh that lava light over there is cool uh so but fortunately if you cook it to a lower temperature for a longer period of time you can still kill off all those beasties and the nice thing is that if you put your steak and say you like it at 145 degrees, just saying, I'm not saying you should go cook your steak to 145 degrees, but if you like your steak cooked to 145, if you heat up your water to 145 and put the steak in it, you can leave the steak in the water at 145 degrees for days and it will not overcook. Now, there can be other Oh, there's my, oh, great. There's my staging island, so the ocean monument is out over that way. Okay, that's great. That's good to know. Let's go relocate the boat to this side of the island. And we'll figure out how to, where to put the portal. It might be a good idea to put the portal on the Mushroom Island itself. Careful of the lava, don't swim into it. Um, as I said, you can have other unintended consequences of leaving proteins at a temperature, a lower temperature than would render it completely overdone for a long period of time. The proteins can behave unusually, but that's uh, it's neither here nor there. It's all part of the technique. So. Ribs. I like cooking ribs in the sous vide. Um, still futzing around with the, the the temperature to figure it out because uh, it's there's a few different things you're trying to accomplish, <laughs> and uh, and they're kind of um, mutually exclusive. <laughs> so uh, 
so yeah ribs I, I tend to I've been cooking them at about 146 147 degrees Fahrenheit um, and cooking it that way for somewhere between 36 and 48 hours which uh, ends up working really nicely so and then I, I make my own rub uh, dry rub to put on it and so I will probably this afternoon nice goodies work on uh, work on that I've got the rub made I bought a new uh, grinder it's intended as a coffee grinder but I've used it for the rub spices and it got all kind of gunked up and I have to figure out what it gunked got gunked up on kind of hoping it was the cinnamon because I'm not going to be using that kind of cinnamon anymore um, I'm, I'm ordering some true Sri Lankan cinnamon uh, which is typically softer and more crumbly than what the cinnamon that you know most of us are familiar with the cinnamon that you buy in grocery stores and little sticks um, the Sri Lankan cinnamon it also comes in sticks it's the same sort of thing it's it's bark off of a tree but it's a different um, that's a pretty shot too but it's a, a but it's a different um, species and the uh, the cinnamon that we are familiar with oh whoa let's grab these because they don't need to be floating up in the air here um, the cinnamon that we're used to also contains it's actually technically toxic in the sense that it contains um, some amount of uh, a substance that humans and other mammals are 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 fine to be toxic which is not awesome but we don't eat enough of it in general for it to become an issue so I'm not saying don't eat cinnamon because it's poisonous it's not it's just um, Sri Lankan cinnamon has lower levels of this toxin so people who are concerned about it tend to uh, promote using uh, you know Sri Lankan Ceylon true cinnamon it gets it, it has a few different uh, people describe it in a few different ways so uh, so anyway that's that I enjoy cooking I enjoy cooking and using unusual techniques for cooking um, and so we will uh, and it turns and the the sous vide for the for the ribs turns out super well i mean it's really a great way of cooking them they come out crazy tender and stay super juicy and um <clears throat> uh the only the only thing is the advantage or the the rationale for cooking ribs at a higher temperature for a shorter period of time is because of the uh the collagen and getting the collagen to melt so i have to go for a much longer period of time to get the, the collagen which is kind of the connective tissue that connects that that holds the muscles together and uh i have to cook for a much longer ow let's try that again i have to cook for a much longer time to uh to get the the collagen to uh sort of melt exit the uh exit the the meat and and that's what makes it tender uh because if you overcook collagen it has a tendency to uh it denatures in a way where it basically turns into a um a sponge and it squeezes all of the all of the moisture all the liquid out and you end up with this sort of really dry you don't get a moist um, you don't get a moist rib at all so anyway um, I'm kind of rambling now and I'm done exploring because I want to play around here a little bit more figure out the right look a good location for hi how are you for a uh, portal and start working on that but I'm gonna do that off camera because it's gonna be a lot of digging through the nether and you don't need to see that and uh, don't worry it's chicken it's okay not eating meat just talking about it um yeah so that's it that's all i got um so this was a i think this was a good 
a good little uh, exploration expedition. This is awesome. So I have some mycelium. I'm very excited. So that's it. Um, I've probably gone on. Yeah, I've recorded a lot longer than I expected. So we will end it here. And uh, I will see you next time. And I hope you have a good day. All right. Bye.